The first step in creating an obstacle avoidance subroutine is to uh, create what is called a state machine. We're going to begin by modifying the, the main code, the main file in our, for our nanomouse, uh, by deleting everything inside the loop function. Uh, just below that, we're going to create a state function. And I'm going to create it instead of using the keyword void, as I have as I have done in the past whenever I've created functions, I'm going to use uh, byte. And that's because this function is actually going to return a value. When I call it, it's going to spit out a number. I'm going to call the function state. And the function is going to have a, a threshold variable. This is going to be what determines whether or not uh, a sensor value uh, triggers the existence of some sort of obstacle. So the, the sensor value is going to have to be greater than 30 for this robot. You might need to change this number to get yours to work out okay, depending on the lighting in your room. And then we're going to have to create another variable called event. I'm making it a byte because there's only going to be so many different events that my robot's able to detect and it's going to be um, byte is going to be a, a sufficiently large number to store all of that information. The next thing I'm going to do is every time I run this state function it's actually going to sense and then when it senses it's going to use that information in a series of if statements. So if the front sensor is greater than the threshold. I want to store a value into event. I'm going to store a 1. If, well, I guess I should say sensors, sensors dot left is greater than the threshold. I'm going to store the value of 2 into the event variable. And if the sensors, or the right sensor, is greater than the threshold, I'm going to store a value of 4. This isn't going to be, it's apparent why I'm choosing a 4 at this point in time. It, you'll see in the next video. But it needs to be powers of 2. So this is 2 to the 0th power because anything to the power of 0 is a 1. This is 2 to the 1st power. And this is 2 to the 2nd power. If I had another sensor I was going to check, it would be 2 to the 3rd power, which would be an 8. And it'll, it'll be, like I said, it'll become clear in the next video. The next, or the last thing I need to do is return the value of the event. So I'm going to say return event. So whatever this number, whatever is stored in here, is going to be spit out when I call that event function right up here in the loop. So I can just say state. And now it's going to give me this number, whatever it happens to be. I'm going to print it to our serial monitor so that I can see uh, what my robot thinks it's seeing. It should be detecting obstacles on its front, left, or right. If it sees something on the, in the front, it will give me a value of 1. If it sees something on the left, it'll give me a value of 2. And if it sees something on the right, it'll give me a value of 4. Before I demonstrate this code in action, we do need to make one minor change to our code, and that is we need to initialize the event variable to zero. So now you can see the state machine in action. When I put my hand in front of the mouse, it registers a one. When I put it on the left hand side, it registers a two. And when I put it on the right hand side, it registers a four, just like we'd expect. The only drawback is this. If I put my hand in front and to the right, it registers a 4 because the last thing it checks is whether or not something is on the right hand side. 
If I put my hand in front and on the left, it registers a 2, again, because the left comes after the front check. If I put it on both sides, or if I put it on both sides and in front, it still always it, it registers the last thing which, that is checked, which is the right sensor. So, if my nano mouse sees multiple objects, it cannot distinguish anything uh, except that the last sensor has been triggered.